Giant Uganda Company Limited is the number one manufacturer of aluminium profiles for windows, doors, partition, glass curtain wall installation, shop front, and many more. In Uganda, it stands as the sole manufacturer and distributor of aluminium profiles to neighboring countries like Rwanda, Congo, Kenya, Tanzania, and many more other countries. Giant Uganda has been in business for nine full years and it thrives to become the number one global aluminium manufacturer and supplier. The quality of aluminium profiles manufactured at Giant Uganda is on international standards. That's why the output sells off at a very high rate. Giant Uganda's Kampala headquarters are located at Plot 84 and 88, 7th Street Industrial Area. It's open from Monday to Friday from 8.30 to 5.30 p.m. And on Saturday, it's open from 8.30 to 2 p.m. It also has another headquarter in Ginger, Plot 11 and 17, Chigenyi Nalwairo Road. This documentary is meant to take our clients and those who wish to be informed through the production process of our quality aluminium profiles. The process begins by collecting raw materials. There are three sources of raw materials from which aluminium profiles are produced. The first is aluminium ingots which are imported mainly from Russia and South Africa. The second is aluminium scrap that's collected locally and from Southern Sudan, Congo and Rwanda. The third source is the offcuts from the standard size by goods. The scrap is brought into the factory premise and the truck steps onto the weigh bridge to weigh the weight of the scrap before it's offloaded to the scrap field. The weigh bridge weighs the vehicle again after offloading to subtract its weight from that of the scrap to get the accurate weight. After the scrap is put in the field, the forklifter carries it to the squeezing machine. which compacts it into cubes in order to maximize space and fit in the boiler. The aluminium scrap cubes are stored temporarily, awaiting the ignition of the furnace. And when the furnace is started, 
They are transported to the furnace with the help of forklifts. The boiler has three sources of fuel. It has electricity, diesel, and at times black oil. Four to twelve bundles of ingots are loaded in the boiler. Accompanied by aluminium scrap and other alloys like magnesium, potassium, chloride and many more. And the boiler is late and runs for 10 to 12 hours at 712 degrees Celsius. The boiler is ignited by ignition guns. The fuel goes through the gun pipes and the guns release fire which sprinkles into the furnace. The boiler runs for about 8 to 10 hours to the desired temperature for liquidifying the ingots and scrap. When loading the scrap, it comes with some dirt and other unwanted material. So the boiler separates the dirt from aluminium by turning it into slug when the required level of aluminium liquid is attained. The boiler is not run on a daily basis, it's run on intervals. When the production of billets get to some considerable amount, the boiler is stopped. The smoke from the boiler contains a lot of unclean gases. On top of the boiler, a chimney channel dispenses the smoke to a unit which receives it for filtering. Inside the unit, the smoke passes through water, which absorbs the gases and the carbon emissions. The clean air is then released through the unit's chimney into the atmosphere. When the water in the unit is filled up with the excess gas and cannot absorb any more emissions, it is then released and pours out to be filtered and fresh water is pumped into the cleaning unit. The boiler also releases ash as a byproduct. This ash is collected in a unit from which it is taken for dumping. The ash from the ash collection unit is stored in a special unit where it is picked by trucks and taken to the dumping sites. A sample of aluminium liquid is taken to the lab to test whether the required quality of aluminium has been attained. If it doesn't make it to the required quality, the lab technician ascertains what chemicals are high or less and balances them. After the quality is ascertained by the results from the lab, the casting team begins to cast the aluminium liquid to the casting machine, forming the aluminium billets. The process of casting runs from 45 minutes to about an hour. Cold water from the water reservoir is released to the casting machine. As the billet tray which holds the hot aluminium liquid lowers down, the cold water cools the hot aluminium liquid. The aluminium liquid slowly transforms into aluminium billets. By the end of the casting process, the billets are cool and ready to be offloaded after thorough checkup. The offloading is done by the pulleys, which are anchored into the billets.
loaded onto the forks which carried them to the temporary store. When the production department receives the production schedule, they begin cutting the billets into smaller pieces that can fit into the machine. The billets are packed in accordance to their sizes, which is small and big, because there are two machines, the small one which produces the small aluminium profiles and the big one which produces the big aluminium profiles. The billets are transported to the production machine. And they are boiled by a boiler which uses diesel. The billets are packed and heated to the required temperature which softens them. The billet boiler is heated at 615 degrees Celsius. The billets are ignited for approximately 6 hours. The molds from which the heated billets pass to form the required profiles or design as ordered by the clients are heated at 480 degrees Celsius for the heated billets to pass through conveniently. These modes create different shapes of profiles as required by the clients. After the profiles are produced, they are not straight enough to the desired state. They go through the stretching machine to straighten them. The profiles are cut into required measurements. And after that, they're packed into pellets with separators in between them. Spaces are placed in between the courses laid by the aluminium profiles and the spacers are made from the soft material that prevents the aluminium profiles from rubbing against each other or scratch the coaching off or creating dents and then they are taken into the boiler that uses current for hardening the profiles are boiled in order to avoid bending when stored because by this time they are hard enough to resist it. After the profiles have come out of the boiler, they are cooled by fans which blow air through the profile hollows and finally the profiles are taken for temporary storage. Aluminium profiles are not produced every day. They are produced on order. When the client comes and places their orders, the orders are printed out and given to the anodizing manager and supervisors. Then the selection team places a code for each profile because each profile has its code. In that order, the profiles are placed. If the order is for anodizing, the materials are taken to the anodizing section. There are pellets that the materials are tied on. And with the help of the pulley, the pellets are raised up and dipped into various forms of acids to produce the required color. The profiles are dipped in sulfuric acid, which cleans it. and then it's dipped in water. After that, they're dipped in aluminium sulfate, which changes it to white. Then in water again. And now it's dipped in nitric acid for cleansing. Then dilute sulfuric acid, which when electrified, hardens the material. 
and then is dipped into nickel sulfate, which changes white to bronze colors. And then it's dipped into a stabilizing chemical, which stabilizes colors to be permanent and shiny. Then the profiles are dried using fans. They are dried again using pressure to ensure that they are thoroughly dry. Because the fans can't complete all the humidity so that when it gets packaged, it doesn't get spoiled. If the material is for powder, it's taken to the powder coating section. is washed to remove the dirt and brought into the powder coating area. Where it's hung onto the holders, which move the material to the powder coating machine. They use the control panel for the powder coating machine to set the machine according to the required specifications. There is a vibrator where they pour powder into the powder bucket. They add pressure to help stir the powder inside the bucket. It moves through the tubes to the gunpowder. The guns spray magnetic powder so that it can get attached to the material. The optigun helps to spray extra powder to the material in case it's not enough. The powder secretion machine produces air that separates the depleted powder from the useful one which is recycled. After applying powder, the aluminum profiles are transported by the conveyor to a turning point. The coated profiles from the powder coating room proceeds to the oven which heats the plastic foam powder to stick to the profiles. The quality control team checks whether the powder has been well administered into the profiles. They test the hardness of the powder stuck on the profile and they range the quality from 45 to 85. After they have approved, they send the profiles to the packing team which pack bundles according to clients' orders and names. 
for easy identification during distribution. The profile packages are now temporarily stored, awaiting the client's pickup or delivery. There are clients that need profiles with wood color, so the powder coated profiles with a brown or chocolate color are chosen. The wood design paper is wrapped on the profiles and wrapped again with polythene. Pressure and water are released, making the wood design paper stick to the material. The material is put under heat for some considerable time for the wood design to stick perfectly. After that, the quality control team checks whether the designs have come out perfectly. The perfect ones are retained and the faulty ones are taken back into the boiler. The fabrication area is where clients give schematics of their customized orders, for example for windows, doors or any other. The team takes measurements of the client's orders and makes them what they require. The fabrication department uses various machinery to execute its work. This machinery runs on either electricity or pressure. There is a pressure pump that generates pressure from air, which the machine uses. The machines that mainly use pressure are the drills. Glass and rubber are fixed and locks are drilled to form complete customer's products for the clients, which then transported to the client's premises by company vans. The rubber used is imported but molded into the required client specifications for their products. After production is done, molds are always clogged with the remainings of aluminium beads. So, before the next production phase, the molds are taken to their cleansing room where the beads are cleaned out with heating a chemical and then taken to the sanding section for smoothening in order to avoid producing rough surface profiles. After sanding, molds are packed in a container, heated up with ammonium in a machine. The molds are cleaned using liquid ammonium. The caustics are stored in crystal form in sacks. They are mixed with liquid ammonium in the washing tank. The washing tank is built a few meters below the ground. It has an underground water reservoir that provides it with water for mixing the chemicals. Pressure tanks are connected to the washing tank and are used to check for the stability of the pressure of the washing tank. And then after, stored up in their shelves, waiting for the next production phase. The factory has safety signs and precautions. These help to serve as guidelines 
to help the staff and non-staff to navigate the factory premises. Security at the factory premises is paramount. The factory has fast response alarm systems, security cameras, and security personnel.